So uh, this talk is part of my thesis in University Autónoma of Madrid with my advisors Daniel Faraco and Angel Castro, and also doing a stay in Leipzig with Laszlo Sekelhi. Uh, interfaces arising as phase boundaries can be found frequently in nature. Several years ago, uh, I was on my holidays and I was happy, as you can observe here, <laughs> because I, I found one of these interfaces, uh, which is curious, is the confluence of two different rivers. I have a better picture here, where you can see it. Maybe some of you have recognized it because it, this is in Germany, in Passau. And indeed, there are, I think there are three rivers. There's a third one here. Uh, in some cases, uh, this interface is unstable and triggers uh, a region, a zone where the fluid may behave uh, turbulent. Uh, in this picture, uh, we saw uh, we see uh, two different bands of I think it's planet Saturn, where uh, we have these two different bands uh, which are uh, uh, almost uh, laminar. But uh, in the core where there is the, this discontinuity, this triggers a strip of where we can observe this this uh, vortices. This is the so-called kelvin helmholtz instability, which I'm going to try to explain with this picture. Here we have a, a flow which is moving with this velocity field. So outside this circle, it's moving like a vortex, and inside it, it is at rest. In this case, this flow is stationary. So it remains the same for all the times. But now we can consider a, a perturbation of this uh, curve of discontinuity. In fact, here there is a tiny perturbation, but maybe you cannot appreciate it and do some numerics of how this curve of discontinuity evolves. And maybe you can do some. What we observe is that the, this, in, uh, this curve tends to roll up into a spiral vortices. So, heuristically, this suggests that. Uh, Heuristically, this suggests that outside uh, there is a uh, there is a strip that start to grow around this inter around this curve, uh, where outside the flow behaves smooth, but inside it may behave uh, more irregular. I will consider another instability, which is called Sapman Taylor. In this case, we have two fluids with different densities. Here, I, I consider that the heavier is inside this this ball. And in this case, the, the flow is non-stationary, but we, what we will observe is that this ball drops due to gravity. Now we can do as before and make some perturbation of this circle. And so what happens with the curve where the density is discontinuous? And what we, what we observe is that the, in the region where the heavier fluid is below the lighter one, uh, it's like there is no perturbation. However, in the region where the heavier fluid is above the lighter one, we observe that the perturbation creates this kind of finger pattern. So in this case, we can think on this region as a kind of mixing zone. And in contrast to the other case, now the strip uh, has, no, has no constant uh, growth rate. So what does the, the light blue curve actually mean exactly? The light blue is, is uh, the initial the initial curve? Uh, we do those some numerics to show how uh, in uh, outside uh, in this region we have uh, the density which is heavier. Outside is the fluid which is light. So uh, in contrast to the other case, uh, uh, now the growth rate is non-constant. Indeed, the mixing zone can can collapse in a single interface, and it is surrounding an an evolving curve. Let us call it the pseudo interface. So, more generally, we can consider the problem that we have certain equations in fluid mechanics. And we consider the in our initial data is a fluid which is a smooth outside a curve, or we have two fluids which are separated by an interface. And we consider that there is a region of this interface, this red part, where uh, there is an hydrodynamical instability. In case that the initial, in the previous cases, the initial curve was analytic. And then for these cases, usually you have at least local in time existence theory. 
but in the cases we are going to consider, the initial curve is no is non-analytic. And in these cases, it is known or at least it is expected that the that the interface evolution is imposed. However, there is a still hope to solve the original equation by constructing this kind of uh, turbulent zone around some evolving pseudo interface with some growth rate. And uh, we will see that this can be done with the convex integration method. The main idea is that the, this convex integration method, when uh, in some cases yields an H principle whereby the problem of finding these uh, solutions U is reduced to find a sub solution bar U. These solutions you construct with the convex integration are uh, agree with the sub solution outside the turbulence zone, but inside uh, there are infinitely many for its sub solution and they may behave like a uh, regular. However, in, this, in spite of this lack of uniqueness on regularity, we can see that uh, essentially uh, at a macroscopic level, they are almost like, like the subsolution. The construction of this subsolution in, in, in the problem we consider is subordinate to the geometry of the turbulence zone. Uh, and we, for short times, it's, uh, it's enough to prescribe this, uh, this growth rate C and the pseudo interface C. So what I want you to keep in mind is that the, at the end of the day, to construct this, this solution, this flows, it will be enough to find suitable uh, growth rate C and pseudo interface C. So, excuse me, so you have non-uniqueness, right? And this is not well posed, so you have non-uniqueness? It's not non-uniqueness. Non -unique. So is there, is there a physical mechanism which maybe selects it? I mean, when you do a computer simulation, uh, presumably you have some viscosity or something there that, that, hmm. that helps you uh, select one. Uh, if you do the simulation twice, you'll get the same, get the same picture? Uh, let me show you the next <laughs> picture. Okay. Well, uh, to illustrate it, uh, consider now this example. We have two different fluids now the, in a, in, with, for the IPM equation, and the heavier one is above. And with this uh, convex integration method, we can construct solutions which look like this. For some, uh, here now the pseudo interface is just the horizontal line and it's growing with some growth rate. And for each sub solution, you can construct infinitely many solutions which look like this. They are they agree outside the, the mixing zone, so they are equal, but inside there are infinitely many and, and they display this irregular behavior. However, in spite of this, if we average in large enough subsets of the mixing zone, we can recover uh, the amount of both fluids if we compare it with the sub solution with some small error, depending on this, the size of the, of the region where you are looking for. Now let us come back to the Kelvin Helmholtz instability. In this case, we have the incompressible Euler equation in the navier stokes with, without viscosity. Uh, we have a constant density. The first row is the conservation of momentum at the idle pressure, the incompressibility, and we consider that the, the vorticity uh, initially is concentrated on a curve uh, with certain vorticity density. In this case, uh, this is called the vortex seed data, and the, velo and the velocity field is recovered by the Biotza value. This is a classical problem in fluid mechanics. Uh, and has uh, two classical approaches. The first one is to first assume that the vorticity remains concentrated on an evolving curve. And in this case, of the compressible Euler equation is equivalent to solve this uh, the birkhoff roth equation for the curve. Uh, However, well, in this case, probably speaking, you need that the initial data must be analytic. The other approach, uh, start with the celebrated work of Delors in which he proved that there are uh, solutions to the incompressible Euler equation for uh, vorticity, which is in just a random intersection H minus one. But the disadvantages of this approach is that it's required that the vorticity to have fixed set. So it must be a positive measure or a negative measure. Notice that uh, in this case, uh, 
if we have uh, about this, uh, it include, this includes the case of vortex seeds. So in particular, if we have a vortex seed, um, which is not in this class, the Lord result that says that the vorticity cannot be accumulated in a single curve. So it might be accumulate the vorticity in, a, in another way. So the case of uh, vortex seeds with, uh, which are non-analytic and uh, with a mixed sign was an open problem. And this is what uh, we study with the convex integration method. In this case, uh, following Dates principle of uh, the Lelis and Sekel Hidi uh, to construct the solution, it is enough to solve this, uh, the macroscopic version of the incompressible Euler equation. And as I mentioned, to find this subsolution, finally, for short times, it's enough to find suitable growth rate on the pseudo interface. So finally, for we prove the theorem for uh, for some initial data which are non-analytic and we don't require the vorticity to have fixed sign, we construct infinitely many uh, solutions for uh, for this vortex sheet data. And this dimension includes the case of mixed sign, so looks like this. And uh, this uh, the principle constraints. The, the geometry of the turbulence zone, but itself it's not it doesn't doesn't give a precise uh, geometry of the turbulence zone. So, but uh, if you look for solution that maximize the dissipation rate at time zero, you find that there is just one growth rate which maximizes. Uh, more or less, if you do if you did uh, some numerics. You see, uh, you see that more or less this fits with the uh, Kelvin Hill instability, but this is just uh, the numerics. Now uh, we come back to the Safman Taylor instability. Uh, in this case, we consider the incompressible Pulse Media equation. We have the conservation of mass, the incompressibility, and the third row is Darcy's law, which is uh, an asymptotic. A version of the conservation of momentum in the Purus media. In this work, Maurice Muscat became interested in the case of multiphase flow inside the Purus media with applications to petroleum engineering. And this is why this kind of uh, data are called Muscat data. The, the situation depends dramatically on the position of the heavier fluid. If the heavier fluid is totally below the lighter one, uh, this is a problem that has been studied study widely the last 20 years. Now it's known that it's well posed in, in critical species. In contrast, if the heavier fluid is totally above the lighter one, then the, the problem is known to be in posing in several other spaces. However, in the last years, by means of the convex integration method, it had a uh, it has been construct solutions to the IPM equation by constructing this mixing zone surrounding the, the interface. For the, the intermediate cases, which are called partial and stable, as it has its own interest, motivated by a result of Castro, Cordova, Pfefferman, Gonzalo, and Lopez Fernandez, in which uh, they saw that there exists analytic initial interfaces, which are in the fully stable regime, that eventually turns. Um, there is a region here in the where the heavier fluid is above the lighter one. However, at this time, uh, the interface is still analytic, so you can continue solving the equation. But later, at some point, uh, in the unstable region, the smoothness breaks down. So after this time, it was not known how to continue the evolution of IP. And this is what we did uh, with the convex integration method, in this case, for a curve which is, is in the partial and stable regime, you can construct solutions to the IPM equation. And in this case, the also the H principle constrains the, the growth rate of the, of the mixing of the mixing. So in this case, the, the difficulty was to find compatibility between this uh, parabolic analysis in the stable region and combine it with the, H, with the convex integration inside the, the, the mixing zone. Uh, I don't know how much time I have. Uh, 
three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Uh, well, uh, to conclude, uh, in the previous examples, I uh, the date principle was already proved. But maybe now you want to consider another equation in which the date principle was not was not proved. Uh, in this case, what you can do is first try to write the equation in the data frame. This is a, a linear differential equation, and the nonlinearity has been high in this constraint capital K. This is supposed to be a, a hard problem, and what you do is to relax it. In the relaxation, uh, the linear differential equation is the same, but you only require uh, this bar u, the subsolution, to take value in a, in a bigger set. So this can be also a hard problem, but easier than the previous one. And if certain conditions are satisfied, then the, you can apply convex integration and you have an H principle. For instance, you, uh, we can consider the IPM equation as before. In the case where uh, we have different densities was analyzed by Sakel Hidi. And now we can consider another example in which we have also different discussions. In this case, uh, the linear operator, here we have a conservation of, of mass, and m is a new variable that encodes the, the momentum and makes the, the equation linear. And uh, our set uh, or constraint is this is this set, and we have to guess what is this uh, this set of the relaxation. In this case, we obtain this this expression, which agrees with the with the uh, with the case capital E, which is uh, the dense more uh, viscosity ratio. Uh, agrees. Um, Surprisingly, in this case, in what, uh, where capital A is different to zero, there is a, this red set in the convex hull that makes it possible to apply the convex integration method for, for, say, for some velocities. That the velocity that makes this quantity equal to zero. And surprisingly, this has a, a physical meaning. If, if first uh, we analyze the IPM equation, we have incompressibility. And then the velocity is written like the perpendicular gradient of the stream function. And Darcy's law is equivalent to this Poisson equation for the pressure and the stream function. In terms of two functions, this first one is called Riley Taylor or Safman Taylor function and the vorticity density. And this quantity equals to uh, this expression. So for these particular values of the velocity, both the Safman Taylor and the vorticity are zero. And then there, uh, both the velocity and the gradient of the pressure are continuous. So say a construction which is purely geometric, you take the set K, which is an, uh, set in R5, and you start to join segments in the direction of the wave cone, you, uh, we arrive to an expression that has a physical meaning, that this expression prevents the two fluids from mixing whenever there is non-discontinuities uh, in the, in the flow. And I conclude with some open problems. Uh, one is the, the, in the construction I, I mentioned, the, the solution inside the, the turbulent zone is just in L infinity. So it would be interesting to apply this other machinery to construct a more regular solution inside the turbulent zone. This link that I mentioned in the numerics between vortex flow or vanishing viscosity or surface tension with the, with the turbulent zone some selection criteria for recovering uniqueness of the subsolution. I mentioned this, this results are local in time to try to construct global solution. Also at the construction I mentioned are in two dimensions. So it's likely it can be done in three dimensions, but this has not been done yet. And to study other instabilities. So that's, all. thank you. Questions? Coming back to uh, Tom's question, uh, since the uh, the uh, solutions are unstable, so what, what 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 did you use in your numerics to actually generate the uh, In the first the first one, yeah, yeah. Uh, I take the the circle mm -hmm. and I make a, a perturbation like it's like epsilon sign and with some with some frequency, and I play with this epsilon and the frequency 
and I apply the vortex block method to compute the the Birkhoff rot equation, which is the solution. Uh, okay, so you're actually uh, so, so, so your perturbation is actually analytics. So you're mm -hmm. you are, so yes. you're computing the analytic solution. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay, let's thank the speaker. Okay.